Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about permanent tissue. Now let us talk about permanent tissue. As I said before also that these tissues do not have the capacity to divide. So they remain as it is and that is why they are called permanent tissues. Now here also these tissues are also formed by cells which perform a specific function. Now you might say that now here they do not form new cells. So what do they do? They have got a specific function to perform. Now how are these permanent tissues formed? I mean from where do these tissues come? Because like meristematic tissue is it is like one tissue giving rise to other tissues. So they are again meristematic something like that. But here how do these tissues form? Now cells formed as a result of repeated cell division are specialized to perform specific function and such cells lose their ability to divide. Like meristematic cells when they divide and form new cells, some of them remain meristematic. That means some of them still have the capacity to divide. But some of the cells, they get specialized to perform a specific function and thus they lose their capacity to divide. So such cells to group together to form permanent tissues. So they do not have the ability to divide. Right? They are termed as permanent tissue because they have a permanent shape, size and function. Right? Okay. The process by which cells formed by meristematic tissue become a permanent tissue is called differentiation. Now this is something, this small concept is very very important to understand. Now this should be very clear in your mind. Basically meristematic tissues are those which will keep on dividing to form new and new cells. Now some of those new cells will remain meristematic. That is they will still divide and form new cells. But some of them will get specialized and lose their ability to divide and they will perform some specific function. So those tissues are permanent tissues. So we can say that permanent tissues are basically formed from meristematic tissue. Correct? Now this process by which cells formed by meristematic tissue lose their capacity to divide is known as differentiation. So we say that cells get differentiated to perform specific function and they are termed as permanent tissue. Correct? Okay. So now we will look at the various types of permanent tissue. Now broadly there are two types of permanent tissue that is complex permanent tissue and simple permanent tissue. So simple and complex as the name suggests simple is going to be something simple not too many complications right and complex is going to have some complications so let us see what are they. Again simple permanent tissue are of so many types parenchyma, cholenchyma, sclerenchyma and epidermis. Whereas complex permanent tissue are of two types, xylem and phloem. Now let us talk about each of these types of tissue one by one. So we will start with simple permanent tissue. As I said, they are going to be simple with not much of complication. So what are simple permanent tissue? Tissues which are made up of similar type of cells. So all the cells present in a tissue are similar to each other whether we talk about their structure whether we talk about their function they are kind of similar I don't say that they are exactly the same but almost similar they are not very different from each other so those kind of tissues are called simple permanent tissue because all the cells are similar so no complexity involved okay so here you can see some of the plant tissues which have been portrayed here. Now let us talk about each of the types of simple permanent tissue. So the first type was parenchyma. So let us now talk about parenchyma. So let us talk about the characteristics of parenchyma. These are the basic packing tissue. So that means Wherever inside uh, 
the plant body basic packing tissue in the sense wherever some gap is left over that gap is filled over by parenchyma so we call it as a basic packing tissue in order to pack the entire thing tissue should be present everywhere right so wherever the empty spaces are there you just fill up fill it up with the parenchyma tissue so the basic packing tissue is parenchyma these are unspecialized live cells so they are not dead cells they are living cells but they are unspecialized that means it is not that they are specialized to perform one specific function so it is not like that now they can perform a variety of functions and that is why they are called unspecialized but also if you talk about their looks they they come in a variety of shapes they can be spherical they can be oval they can also be round in shape they have thin cell walls and the cell walls are made up of cellulose so cellulose is the composition of the cell walls intercellular spaces are present so there are some gaps between two cells of parenchyma so somewhat like this so here you can see these are the this round shaped cells are the cells parenchyma cells and the spaces in between these are the intercellular spaces so little bit of intercellular space is also there so this is your basic packing tissue now what is its function now as i said these are unspecialized so they can perform actually a variety of function they can provide support to the plants they also help in food storage they store nutrients and water so see all the three are very very important functions support food water and nutrients so it acts as a storage tissue as well as a support tissue so that is about parenchyma now if i say where do we find these tissues now they can be found in many different places like the internal layers of leaf or the internal layers of stem and root and that is why it is called packing tissue so everywhere inside you want to stuff something so that is parenchyma there now talking about the types of parenchyma there are two types of parenchyma that is chlorenchyma and aerenchyma now we can't i can just can't say that they are the types of parenchyma rather they are some specific names given to some specific type of parenchyma when i say chlorenchyma it is basically a parenchyma tissue with chlorophyll and that is why the name chlorenchyma from chlorophyll it took the word chlorin so it is nothing but a black parenchyma with chlorophyll so obviously it is present in the internal layers of leaf because leaf is the only organ where we find chlorophyll so function would be definitely it helps in the process of photosynthesis because chlorophyll plays the most important role during photosynthesis that is the process by which plant prepare their food in presence of sunlight the another form is aerenchyma so here the term air this comes from air so air cavities are present so we can say parenchyma with air cavities so this type of parenchyma is present in aquatic plants now why do we have this type of uh, parenchyma in aquatic plants because for aquatic plants the process of respiration is quite different than that of the terrestrial plants right so there they have big air cavities as you can see in this picture quite big cavities right so that is why the since the parenchyma is quite uh, different in their structure therefore this different name called aerenchyma is given to them they help in floating obviously for aquatic plants one of the major need is to float and because of that they have got this air cavities so that thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again